If your GTM event tracking is not working, in this video, I will show you the solutions. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you are new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to become a professional in this area, then consider subscribing to the channel. There can be various situations where your event tracking is not working in Google Tag Manager. Maybe you don't see any events in the preview mode, or maybe your tags are not firing for some reason, or maybe your tags are firing, but you don't see that data in your Google Analytics reports. Let's take a look at the most common problems and solutions. Reason number one, your data layer is broken. Here I have a demo page where my Google Tag Manager container is loaded and we see that the preview mode is enabled. I did that by clicking this preview button right here. However, if I clear the preview mode and then refresh the page, watch what happens. I have refreshed the page, then in the preview mode, I see that my container loaded event is missing in the preview mode. And if you want your Google Tag Manager to work, that event is required. Also, in this container, I have a sample all element clicks trigger. So it means that the click tracking should work and I should start seeing some clicks right here. However, if I click on the link right here, or let's say on this text, on this link, you will notice that none of these new events are available right here. This is because on this demo page, the data layer is broken. Now, if you do the right click and then view page source, take a closer look at the position of the data layer. On this page, I will click Control F to enable the search then I will enter data layer. And here I see one data layer configuration. However, there is another problem a bit lower on a page. Here is the Google Tag Manager data layer snippet that is required for Google Tag Manager to work. However, below it, there is this line of code. And it says that data layer equals and then something. It might be an empty array, it might be some parameters. But the problem here is that Google Tag Manager, when it is loaded on a page, it initiates a data layer but then this line of code, which says data layer equals, and then something, it overrides that Google Tag Manager's data layer and breaks the event tracking. So if you have some data layer code snippet on your website, and it is using this syntax where data layer equals, and then something, and that snippet is placed below the Google Tag Manager snippet, this will break your data layer. Therefore, event tracking will not work. A solution to this would be to ask a developer to move this code snippet above the Google Tag Manager container snippet. So instead of here, it should be somewhere right here. Or another option would be to use the data layer push method. And if you want to learn more about that, I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. Reason number two, you haven't created a trigger in Google Tag Manager that enables certain event tracking capabilities. Let's say that I have a new Google Tag Manager container, I have no triggers, and I want to track link clicks on my website. Now, if I click this link while having the preview mode of Google Tag Manager enabled, I would expect that link click event appear right here, but it is not visible here. Why? Because I haven't created any just links trigger in my container. If you're running Google Analytics 4 on your website, then even without the link click trigger, you still might see some link click events right here. But if you are just starting fresh in this container, and you have no link click triggers, then you won't be seeing those events right here. Even if you have enabled the click variables in the variables section, so variables, configure, and then you enable these variables, even then this is not enough to start seeing those link click events. Let me show you. Right now I have enabled all click variables. I don't have any click triggers. And then I will try to test what happens on a website. So now if I click this link, the link click event is still not available right here. So if I want to start seeing link click events, I have to create at least one just links trigger in my container. So let's call it all link clicks, then save it. And then I will refresh the preview mode. And after that, if I click this link right here, you will start seeing the link click events right here. The same process applies to interactions such as YouTube video interactions of the embedded video player, then scroll tracking, and then other built-in interactions that are available in the triggering section right here. Reason number three, using an incorrect trigger 
or just having an incorrect trigger configuration in general. Here I have a test tag in my Google Tag Manager container. It should fire when a visitor clicks a link that is related to add to cart. On my demo page, I have this button and I expect that this trigger will work when this button is clicked because on many websites, it is fairly common to decorate and design links to look as they are buttons, even though in the code, they are links. This trigger will be looking for particular clicks where the click ID contains add to cart. And I know that because let's say that I have inspected this button and its ID contains add to cart. Now I have enabled the preview mode on this page. And if I click this button right here and then go back to my Google Tag Manager preview mode, I will see that on the previous page, the tag did not fire. And that happened because this button is actually not a link. In HTML, this is a button. And this button element and all the clicks on this element, they are not tracked by the just links trigger. So instead, I should use not the just links trigger, but I should use the all element clicks trigger. Click save. And then if I refresh the preview mode once again, and then click this button, now I will see the click event. I click on it and I see that my test tag has fired. Also, let's do one more example. And in this case, let's say that I am looking for all element clicks, but only those clicks where click ID contains add to cart. This time I've added two dashes right here because I think that this is the ID of the button. And then refresh the preview mode. Let's see what happens. Click add to cart. The product is added to a cart. Now, if I go to preview mode of Google Tag Manager, I see the click event. But if I click it, I will see that my tag did not fire, even though I expected it to fire. So what can you do right now is that you should click on a tag while having this event selected because that's the click on which I was expecting this tag to fire. So I click the tag and then you will notice the status not fired. And also you will see the firing trigger conditions, even though the event type was correct and it was click, the click ID condition was not met. In fact, while I'm on this event and I am looking at this tag, I could switch from names to values. And here I can see the real click ID of the element. And I mean that add to cart button. So this was the real click ID, but this is what my trigger is looking for. And as you can see, this does not contain this. Therefore, this trigger was not activated and the tag did not fire. So every time your tag does not fire, always check the event when your tag was supposed to fire click it, click the tag, and then inspect what kind of condition was not met. Reason number four, you are dealing with an iframe. Here I have another situation on a demo page. I have my Google Tag Manager container enabled. I also have the click trigger active on my page. So it means that if I click something on a page, I should start seeing those click events in the preview mode. But let's take a look what happens. So now first I will click anywhere on the background, maybe on this link, and you will see the click events right here. But now let's click here. I will click here. I will click here. Unfortunately, new events are not appearing. That is because this website is embedded on this demo page. And that is done with the help of iframes. Now, without diving too much into technical details, this means that one website or let's say one HTML document is embedded in another one. And this one is loaded from a different domain, for example, for security reasons, JavaScript cannot access what is happening in the iframe. If you have Google Tag Manager container snippet embedded on the parent page, but you don't have your container in the child page or in the iframe, unfortunately, you won't be able to track what is happening inside of it. For example, this is very popular among chat widget providers. So if you want to track clicks when a chat widget appears, most likely that widget is in an iframe and you won't be able to do that. Unless of course the developers of that chat widget provide some other options like things called JavaScript APIs. Now, if you want to know whether you're dealing with the iframe, one of the ways on Chrome could be just to do the right click somewhere on the background of this element and you will see reload frame. So if you see this, it means that this is an iframe. Another option could be just to do the right click inspect. And then right here, you can climb up and keep looking for iframe element. So if you see this and if you hover your mouse and that 
element is highlighted, it means that you're dealing with the iframe. So your solution here could be to ask a developer to add your Google Tag Manager container to the iframe as well. And there are many other technical nuances and steps that you have to complete afterwards. So if you want to learn more about that, take a look at my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. I will post a link to the course below the video. And in that course, I explain how to deal with iframes in very great detail. Reason number five, typos. Let's go back to that example when we were tracking the add to cart button. Right now, my condition looks like this. I will be looking for all clicks on elements where click ID contains add to cart. Now, if I click preview button, then I click add to cart and check the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. Here on the click event, I will see that my tag did not fire. If I click that tag and then check the trigger conditions, I will see that this real value of the click ID of the button does not contain this part. Now, what you will notice is that this is add to cart and this is add to cart. However, in many places, Google Tag Manager and basically JavaScript in general is case sensitive. So this add to cart does not equal to this add to cart. And if you want to create specific triggers, you must enter case sensitive values. So instead of just having all lowercase add to cart, you should enter add to cart exactly like this, because this is part of the value of the buttons click ID. The same principle also applies to things like custom event trigger. So for example, if you go to triggers and new and try to create a custom event trigger, the event name here is also case sensitive. So these five reasons are the most common ones when it comes to tags not working in Google Tag Manager and when they don't fire properly. But if none of these tips helped you, then don't worry because I have a blog post and I will post a link to it below the video. So in that blog post, you will find more reasons why your event tracking is not working. For example, maybe you're dealing with the form submission trigger and that one is not working, or maybe your YouTube video tracking is not working, or maybe even your tags are firing, but you're not seeing that data in your Google Analytics reports. So if you want to learn some additional tips, then take a look at that blog post and I will post a link to it below the video. And these were the most popular reasons why your event tracking is not working in Google Tag Manager. If none of these tips helped, then take a look below the video for some additional resources. If you found this video useful, then hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.